Hello, I'm John O'Connor. Um, I'm a course director of the MPhil in Psychoanalytic Studies at Trinity College Dublin, uh, also an assistant professor of clinical psychology. My background is as a clinical psychologist and psychotherapist. Um, on this um, presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the MPhil in Psychoanalytic Studies as it's run in, in the School of Psychology uh, in Trinity College. Um, I'm looking at the overall philosophy of the course, um, and something of the of our of our teaching methods, um, about our modules, um, about the dissertation, which is a requirement of the course, and also about um, about how you may ap apply for the course. The program uh, at a glance, um, just to kind of summarise uh, what what we're about and and uh, what is involved in the course. This is a one-year academic program exploring um, psychoanalytic theory and applications. Uh, we have six taught modules uh, over uh, the two uh, terms. Um, we have two days a week teaching with eight hours classroom contact per week. Um, our teaching is in seminar style. Um, we have a high level of, of interaction and discussion in classes. There is a lot of scope for uh, raising ideas and questions, um, 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 t talking with one another, um, and trying to make sense of ideas through through your own experience. Also on the course, we have a, a dissertation, and this is obviously one of the important aspects of the course. It's 15,000 words in length, approximately, and it's submitted uh, toward the end of the year, in, in, in mid-July. Um, support is provided uh, with the development of a dissertation idea and in the writing and presentation of the dissertation over the, the course of the program. Why might you select to, to do a, an MPhil in psychoanalytic studies or to look at the area of psychoanalysis? How might it benefit you in your, in your studies, um, in your development of um, kind of a clinical practice, um, or more generally uh, in your kind of overall outlook? Um, Many of our students come to the course on a search for answers to questions about, about human experience. And um, maybe not surprisingly, uh, often these questions are inspired, um, at least in part, by personal experience. Some draw on the course um, as a bridge to training in a, in a, in a clinical field, um, in psychotherapy, um, clinical psychology, uh, counseling psychology, um, counseling maybe more generally, by coaching, or in, in, in any of the kind of fields where um, a level of understanding of um, human experience and human behavior are important. It's important to say that, that it's often curiosity that brings people to this area. Um, this is often a curiosity about human motivation and a desire to look at subjects that are not looked at generally in other fields, or aren't looked at in a concerted way in other fields. Um, subjects such as sexuality, aggression, uh, creativity, etc. These are often um, subjects that are um, moved around or are difficult to negotiate. And psychoanalysis perhaps has been one of those fields that has uh, looked at, at these subjects in a particularly pointed way and has sought to get to the, the core, get to the heart of these. Um, so um, as seeing them as parts of our human experience, of our human psychological makeup, and maybe less so uh, in relation to their problematic nature. Um, also, you may use the material on this course to supplement your existing knowledge and to give a fresh perspective to add to those you already have. So our students may come from um, backgrounds in philosophy or in psychology or in anthropology um, or in a vast range of, of other fields um, that have um, and, and have already existing kind of perspectives, um, particular kinds of ideas, particular kind of assumptions, uh, particular senses of things. And um, um, I suppose students often use this course to, to enhance that or to grow that in some ways or to bring some kind of contrast or to fill in some area that, that feels like it, it, needs, it needs to be addressed. Um, 
Of course, you may also wish to bring a psychoanalytic lens to work you're doing in, in a field already, in some, in some field of practice, uh, that may be a clinical field or a creative field or in some other field. Um, um, and of course, um, many of our students bring a very personal, um, I suppose, interest into the course, as well as an interest in, in something that is, is more about um, a professional development uh, and is more maybe um, related to, to career development. Um, of the questions we address on the course, which are, are multiple and in, in, in some senses, we, we, we are built on, on kind of questions and attempts to answer those questions. Among these questions are, why do we experience anxiety? Um, what purpose do dreams uh, serve in our lives? Um, how do we deal with the enormity of what we meet in the world? All of that stimulation that is out there, um, which is perhaps particularly relevant today. How do we develop satisfying relationships? Relationships that are um, uh, beneficial for us, that are satisfying, that help us to grow. Um, what attracts us to people who are damaging uh, to us? Why do we repeatedly meet people who have who present us with the same kind of problem? What 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 attracts us to to this kind of kind of experience? What um, of us is in the things we enjoy? Um, maybe another way of putting that is is what is it that, that brings us to um, select one thing and to reject another or to, to bring us satisfaction um, with, with one thing and dissatisfaction with another? What is the role of fiction in our lives? Um, how does self-criticism come about? Um, now each of these are very... Each of, each, each of these questions are uh, kind of questions that have got a richness and a depth to them, um, both in their, the question themselves, but also in the kind of answers that we may, that we may proffer. Um, I'm going to move on now just to say a little bit about, just generally about psychoanalysis and, and our approach to psychoanalysis on this course. Um, psychoanalysis is a study of the, the relationship between consciousness and unconscious mental life. That's very much the starting point of, of psychoanalysis. It's the most general definition of psychoanalysis. It covers all of the different fields of psychoanalysis. Um, Freud's suggestion that most of our psychological life is unconscious, um, that, it, that is that it exists beyond our immediate awareness um, is still a, a contentious one today. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea that that is kind of, is objected to maybe more so than anything else in psychoanalysis. Um, psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis is concerned with uh, what influences our day-to-day -day experience. Um, and it has developed since approximately 1890 and is still in development and flux. Um, um, and psychoanalysis emerged and developed um, over the era over an era of, of, of strife and change uh, in these 130 years, there's been a, a we've, we've had wars and um, uh, revolutions and um, pandemics, as we also have had great developments in, in science and in um, technology and medicine, also in the fields of, of psychology and of course, um, psychoanalysis also. And psychoanalysis has been a part of this development of the modern world, um, particularly so in its bringing of ideas of mind into our, our discourse, um, in our understanding of those subjects I alluded to earlier, sexuality, aggression, um, it, it, creativity, the importance of our relationships uh, to, to one another. Um, specifically on this course, we, uh, um, we approach psychoanalysis in a, in intentionally, in a, in a non-dogmatic manner. Um, we think of, of psychoanalysis as a set of theories, 
um, uh, all of which are concerned with what underpins our experience as, as humans. Um, psychoanalysis is concerned with our, our struggles with freedom, for instance, um, the experience of anxiety and the kinds of protections or defences we develop to deal with this. Um, I suppose in relation to this point, this is, is one of the I suppose, core elements of psychoanalysis and in, in many ways one of the, the ideas that, that translates into the world is the idea that, that a great deal of psychological life is about the experience of anxiety that itself is a response to what is, is kind of what is threatening in the world. Um, but this anxiety provokes um, an, a need in us to, to protect ourselves in some ways and that we develop various kinds of defences, um, too numerous to, to talk about, but we develop defences in order to deal with that, but that these defences then come to be an important part of our lives. These defences in a way come to influence our overall experience of things. While they help us uh, in protecting us from anxiety or from high levels of anxiety, they may also limit our ability to experience the world. Um, psychoanalysis um, explores what motivates us also um, and our struggle to turn our strivings, what we wish for, what we want, what we de desire, into um, achievements, into things we see through. Um, this is quite a struggle, this, this struggle to, to move from, uh, from desire to some realization of that desire. Um, we're interested in how psychoanalytic theory relates to the contemporary world. Um, where, where all of this kind of striving and all of the ideals um, meet with complication. For instance, in the area of climate change and our response to that, partly our resistance to, um, to maybe climate change science in a way, our response to the coronavirus pandemic, gender identity, political tensions, sexuality, religious belief, um, disbelief, etc. We, we, on this course, we, we consider four main theoretical positions, um, among others. Um, we uh, encourage um, students on the course to, um, to read these central authors, as well as a wider range of kind of thinkers um, who are connected with these authors, but also who are outside of outside of their specific fields. I'll, 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 I'll mention something about each of these four authors and what makes their contribution um, um, significant and what we also focus on um, in the course. Sigmund Freud, who is the, 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 the father of psychoanalysis, the originator of psychoanalysis, and the, the person whose ideas are perhaps the, the, the widest and most influential um, Freud influenced all of psychoanalysis. He originated some of the observations, many of the questions, and at least some of the answers to those questions. Um, Freud is very important for his idea of unconscious mental life. Um, while figures before Freud had, had uh, been aware of the unconscious um, and its part in, in our experience, it, it was Freud's major development to bring a system of thought or to develop a system of thought that helped place the unconscious in relation to the mental life as a whole. Um, among the, the many, many things that Freud looked at and that we talk about maybe repeatedly on the course are the repetition compulsion, that desire or that kind of reality that we have that we tend to repeat things, uh, often things that are difficult for us. The role of dreams, um, in mental life, which we'll say a little bit about later, and the psychoanalytic process, um, um, the development of a psychotherapeutic space where certain things are transacted, as well as the role of sexuality in psychological life. Um, Freud is, is maybe particularly famous for his, his placing of sexuality um, as being the very... Um, 
central motivation within human life. Um, now, the sexuality Freud was talking about isn't um, isn't a very simple and straightforward subject. It's a, it's a slightly more complex thing, but he's, it is an important aspect of his theory. Melanie Klein um, is very significant because of her um, ideas on the role of destructiveness in, in psychological life, that destructiveness and our own destructiveness is something that we, 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 we need to handle. It's something that is present from early in our lives and has a major influence on how we experience things. It results, partly results in experiences of guilt for the damage that we have done or that we, we may feel we have done. And then the efforts at repairing the damage done. Uh, Klein's work is much more substantial than this, but this, this is kind of a, one aspect of her thinking. Wilfred Bion um, is a, is a, was substantially influenced by, by Klein, but also developed many of his, his own ideas. The idea of containment is important among these. This, this is an idea of an active process that helps to digest otherwise undigested material. The idea that there is a, a function in our minds uh, and also in the world that helps us to make sense of or to digest things that are very raw for us. Um, uh, Beyond developed in relation to this a, a theory of thinking um, that gave a special place to, to emotion. Um, this is a theory of thinking that is, that is different than a, a cognitive theory of thinking. It is not an information processing theory of thinking. It is a theory of thoughts um, that uh, contains at their core an emotional valence. Um, so for beyond, emotion is a central aspect of thought and of thinking. Um, Donald Winnicott's work, um, um, we're, we're concerned there with the development of the, the mother and baby, or what takes place, or what is transacted between mother and baby, and the important part that that mothering or caring takes um, has for 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 the baby, um, and for. Um, and the relationship between the, the carer and the cared for more generally. Um, Winnicott talked about the, the, this role as being one of providing a facilitating environment or facilitating space. Um, so in a way, we all require um, spaces um, in which our underlying kind of impulses, our underlying desires, our underlying tendencies can be can be helped to emerge uh, and can be held and protected in some way, so as, as to develop. Um, uh, Winnicott's also important for the idea of the, the true self, the idea that there is a core self that is quite vulnerable, um, but that is the source of creativity and spontaneity and well-being for us. But that this, that this true self, um, due, to, due to its vulnerability, often requires the development of false um, self um, compromises, that, it, it, that, that we need to develop some form of protection or some form of a, almost like a secondary skin or some way of being that protects our true self. So we may develop ways of being in the world that make us seem one way while underneath that and at the level of the true self we are quite different. I'll just say something about the, the learning environment on the course. This is, is important um, just to give you a sense of our overall approach to kind of teaching and to classes and, and how, we, how we, we, we think about this and how we go about it. Um, we have an understanding that our students may not have much exposure to psychoanalytic ideas um, in their prior studies. And we really help our students to navigate through these complex ideas and to relate these ideas to what are for them maybe already familiar ideas 
Um, so we, we tried to break down a psychoanalysis into its basic building blocks. We look at the assumptions that are behind it. We look at some of the, the language that's used and we try to see how that language can be, can be kind, of, kind of understood and acquired and how it can equip us to think about um, experience. In order to do this, we, we, we keep the course pretty small um, and our teaching is through small group seminars uh, where we essentially sit in a circular, circular formation and there's a scope for discussion of ideas. Um, some students will um, um, are more engaged in these kinds of discussions and some may be, may be quieter and we have an understanding that there's always going to be a balance within, within a group, within a Within, within a class between people who are more vocal and others who are, who are quieter. We don't require people to be uh, very vocal uh, and some people may say very little in the group or very little in particular in particular classes and we are very kind of understanding of that. Um, the learning really takes place through this exp exploration of ideas and the, and the trading of, of perspectives with, with, within a class. Um, and because our, our students come from a variety of backgrounds and, and nationalities, uh, we've scoped to bring different perspectives, starting points and assumptions into our discussions. And as I've said before, but maybe it's important to, to reiterate, we, we, we approach ideas in a non-dogmatic manner. So we're not seeing any one perspective as winning out over others. And we're not asking you to reach the same conclusions as we may reach. Um, in relation to the, the course structure, we have six taught modules. Um, these are as follows, the, the emotional world of the child, um, psychoanalysis and art, uh, dreams, dreaming and psychological life, object relations theory, the unconscious in groups, organizations and society, and psychoanalysis and the body. The first three of, of these are uh, completed in the first term and assignments are completed at the end of that term. Um, the second three, uh, object relations, uh, the unconscious in groups and psychoanalysis and the body are completed in the second term. Again, with the assignment, with the assignments for each of these being submitted at the end of um, the, the term. The dissertation um, is, uh, is, is conducted over uh, the course of the program as a whole. So we introduce students to the dissertation from the very beginning of the program, ask uh, them to think about um, ideas, and we work through uh, from that point to completion, which is um, kind of mid-July. We're coming to, to a close now of this uh, presentation. Um, just to give you some kind of details around the application process, if you're interested in that. Um, firstly, to say that applications are currently open for the course. Um, and we accept applicants on a kind of first come, first serve basis. So we try to respond to applications. We, we try to, well, with, within two weeks of, of the application being received. You may apply at the link that's supplied here. The, the application process beyond that point is, is well, well signposted. We accept applications from candidates who have, have a 2 1 or higher or equivalent in their primary degree or who anticipate achieving this in upcoming exams um, and who, very importantly, have a, a specific interest in psychoanalysis. I suppose it is important if you're going to do a course of this kind that you have an interest in the area. Um, maybe you've done some reading in the area, have a sense of what it involves, the kind of questions that it asks, and the kinds of kind of conclusions or propositions that 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 it makes. It's important that there is that there is a fit between yourself and the subject matter. If if you are making an application, you will be uploading a number of a number of documents um, uh, alongside your application. Um, you will need to upload a, a full transcript of your primary degree um, if or when um, that's available. If you haven't, haven't as yet completed your course, uh, the transcript can be submitted um, a little bit later uh, in the process. 
You will also be submitting a curriculum vitae or a resume, uh, one that includes details of your academic um, and vocational experience um, in particular. And where English has not been your first language, proof of English language competence. You will find further details of, of, of these tests of English language competence um, on, uh, with the application process. A small number of other documents are, are also required, and you can see, see details of those with the, uh, in the application system itself. We'd also ask that if you're applying um, to please contact your two referees prior to or at the time of your application to the course. Um, this will help to, to ease the, um, the, the, the process of submitting uh, references, which can be at times a slow one if, if, there, if some attention isn't paid, paid to that. Um, your referees will be contacted automatically when you apply and they will be asked to upload um, documents. Um, I hope that this presentation has uh, helped you uh, to get a sense of the MPhil in psychoanalytic studies. Um, I appreciate that it may be a little bit text heavy uh, and that some of the material may be kind of um, maybe a kind of a, a, a little a little complex. If you would like to to contact me or to contact um, my colleague uh, Anne Marie Duffy um, to uh, to ask about anything to do with the course or with the application process, we would be very happy to help you with that. You will see email addresses um, for Anne-Marie and for myself on, on this slide. Thank you. Mm -hmm.